Hi, my name is Kevin O'Brien. Congratulations on your purchase of a brand new OTC Diehan DTX2200 TIG Inverter. We're going to be covering the assembly from start to finish. Always unbox the trolley and the water cooler and assemble them together prior to attaching the uh, DTX2200 to the water cooler itself. First off, we need to confirm that we have four main components in the trolley box. We have our main frame with the handles and the wheels. Next up, we have our base mounting plate. We have our gas shelf, and we have our stabilizing tray with all the parts in it. Again, I'll uh, reiterate that it is easier to assemble the water cooler to the base plate and the trolley itself before attaching the DTX2200 air-cooled unit. Um, we're going to take our, our safety manual and our parts bag. We're going to set that aside, and we're going to use that later. We're going to start by inverting the water cooler itself, but first making sure that the cap is securely fastened. It is a leak-proof cap, so when inverted, it will not leak all over the floor. It comes preloaded with glycol. You will need to add distilled water, but that will be in later in the video. We're going to invert. Now we are going to grab our four 6x16 millimeter silver hex bolts and slide them into these plastic molded slots right here. It's important to note that you need to align these properly and make sure that they are fully seated. Now that we've inserted our hex screws, we are going to mount our base plate. It's very important that this is orientated correctly. We have two long oval holes here and two short, more circular holes. There are also two holes on this side and one hole on this side. In order to assemble this correctly, we need to make sure that the long oval holes are in the rear of the water cooler and the single hole is facing to the right when having the water cooler inverted. The next step will be to grab our 18 millimeter flat washers and our 10 millimeter star washers. We're going to start with the flat washer add the star washer on top and secure it with our hex nut, 10 millimeter. We're gonna do this four times. Give them a good finger snug first and tighten them down. Now we're gonna be using a 10 millimeter socket. It's important to remember not to over tighten these because we are tightening into plastic slots. Go ahead and put this right side up. And our next step will be to attach the wheels to the frame itself. The wheels will come temporarily mounted to the axle. Uh, first we need to lay the frame down, remove the wheel, Add our first flat washer, replace the wheel, add our second flat washer, and firmly press the cap onto the wheel. For this, I'm going to invert it onto its side, makes it a little easier to apply pressure. If necessary, you may need to use a rubber mallet or a hammer to secure this on there. It should only take a little bit of pressure though. Make sure you repeat the steps for the second wheel. So I put the trolley in the upright position and slip the, ga the gas bottle shelf into place. We're going to insert our black hex bolts with our spring washers on them already. We have holes on the top and the bottom here. I've already put two of them on this side to speed this process up a little bit. Go ahead and finger tighten them to start. Now I'm going to put this trolley on the side to ensure that I have properly tightened the bolts. They're only finger tightened 
right now. In order to tighten these bolts, I'm going to be using a 13 millimeter socket. Make sure they're nice and snug. Securely fastened. We're going to move on to mounting the water cooler that's already been attached to the base plate to the frame itself. We're going to secure this by taking our 5 by 16 millimeter silver Phillips head bolt, a small flat washer, and the small star washer. Those are 8 millimeter star and 10 millimeter flat. First, we start by adding the star washer rod, then the flat washer. Do that to all four and set them to the side. Next, we're going to actually take our water cooler itself, making sure that the two holes are facing towards the back of the gas bottle shelf. It's very important to do so, otherwise you will not be able to secure it to the frame itself. Ensure that you are above these brackets and they are not hooked underneath this lip here. So we're going to start by attaching the front two. We're going to grab our silver Phillips head. And there are two holes right here on the front that we're going to line them up on. We're just going to finger tighten these to start, as we may need to shimmy the back a little bit in order to line up the back holes. Now I'm going to slide this very carefully to the edge of the table, it's going to help me gain access to the underside of the, the frame itself. So we're going to take our bolts and come over here, make sure our holes are lined up properly, and screw them right in. And we're going to finger tighten these at first as well. We're going to come around front and fasten screws on the front side, make sure they're secure and tight. We're going to do the same to the rear side. And that completes the steps for mounting the base to the frame itself. Next up, you're going to grab your DTX 2200 out of the box and get it ready for assembly and for the joining to the water cooler itself. First step will be to remove the package that comes attached to the top handle here. We're going to set that aside because we're not going to be using that during this video. Next, we're going to lay the DTX 2200 on its side so that I can get access to the feet and remove them. I'm going to pull it forward so you guys can see what I'm doing right here. We're going to take our 8mm nut driver. We're going to use that to remove the feet. Slide right in. We're going to want to save these feet for later, just in case you want to revert back to the air cool package. They can be reused and remounted. Next, we're going to remove the plastic slot covers that are both in the front and the rear of both the air cooled unit and the water cooled unit. Go ahead and use our flathead screwdriver. If you just get it seated, give it a little turn, it should pop right out for you. Stand this back up, get it out of the way. I'm going to come over here and remove the tabs from the water cooler. We're going to place those aside as well for safekeeping, just in case you want to revert to the air-cooled machine, you won't have any loose pieces, you won't have any gaps. Now we're going to turn this on its side and locate the connection plate cover, which is located on the very bottom, the very center of it. 
Turn it around so you guys can see what I'm doing. Just two Phillips head screws that attach it. You're gonna loosen the front most screw, take it all the way out, and slightly loosen the rear screw. Now do not throw away or discard the front screw because you're going to be putting it right back in. So just loosen the back a little bit, that'll allow this to slide over. We're gonna take our screw, and reinsert it in the previously drilled hole. It comes pre-drilled. Now that we've removed the cover and have access to the electrical components inside, we are going to mate the air-cooled unit with the water-cooled unit using the electrical connection. I'll make sure to hold the handle, because this will not rest on its own. And be sure to line up the pins properly, because this only goes in one way, and you do not want to crush the pins. You should hear a nice little click when the two successfully connect. All right, so we're going to lower this down very carefully. We are going to make sure that we line up the holes that we just previously uncovered in the front and the back. And this is where we grab that parts bag again. We're gonna utilize those sheet metal screws. So now that I've got my parts bag, we're gonna go ahead and empty these out. We're gonna set this blue tube right here. This is our purging tube. We're gonna set that aside for later after we've connected it to power. You should have four metal tabs in here and eight sheet metal screws that are going to fasten right here. So we'll start by putting a couple in. Grab your Phillips head screwdriver. We'll walk around the front so you guys can see a little better. And the most important thing is, is to not over tighten these. You go ahead and get your first one in, get you a little guide, but then make sure you line it up and it's straight. And as you add them on, it will straighten itself. But we don't want to over tighten these. So if we over tighten them, we've got metal going into plastic and we'll end up stripping them if you over tighten them. So now that I've attached the rear tabs and fastened them securely, we're gonna get these wires out of the way, the gas hose and the electrical cord itself. So we've got it wrapped around a little bit. We're just gonna get those out of the way because we need access to this top bar right here. Next up, we're gonna grab our plastic clip right here. We're actually going to set this right in the middle. It just clips right on nice and easy. The next step will be to locate the stabilizing tray itself. Make sure this bracket is facing the handle itself and it's actually going to lay right on top of that black clip we just put on. Now we're going to go ahead and line up these holes right here. There's two slots. We're going to do this by grabbing our Phillips head screws with a flat washer and a star washer on them. The same orientation as before. Now we want to make this tray as flat as possible. So you're going to need to do a little bit of shimmying before you fully tighten and fully secure this to it. So now we're going to grab our Phillips head, tighten these bad boys down. We are complete with the assembly of the trolley and the water cooler to the air cooled unit. So your DTX will not come with a power plug on it. That is your responsibility to assemble and hook up to your proper power. But for this video, we have already attached a plug and we need to show you the purging process. So now that we've hooked it up to power, we're going to purge the water cooler to ensure that there's no air in the system. To do so, we're gonna locate that blue tube from earlier. We're going to come around to the front, and we're going to attach the blue tube to the blue outlet. Goes right in, clicks in, easy quick disconnect. The next step is to unscrew our watertight cap, bend the tube back into it, and hold it down. When I turn this machine on, the water is going to shoot out with 
a lot of pressure and you don't want the tube flying out and spraying all over. So I'm going to go ahead and power it on. The power is located in the rear. Switch it to the right. It's going to power up. It just cycled through. It happens very quick. It only takes a couple of seconds. And now we have purged the system to ensure that there's no air in the line. You can now remove this blue tube and set it aside. You may need it in the future when you refill your glycol or if you change out your coolant. Now we're going to replace the cap. Make sure it's nice and snug. For the next step, we're going to make sure that we power down our TIG unit with the power switch back here. We're going to go ahead and turn that to the left. We're going to do that for a couple of reasons. The main reason is so that we don't electrocute ourselves by accidentally depressing the pedal and igniting the terminals. All right, so I'm going to swing around front real quick, and the next step is to attach the foot pedal right here. First, we need to remove our plastic red cap from the machine and locate the box that says PSR 7 foot pedal 5 meter cable on it. Go ahead and open that up. Remove your foot control. Set that box to the side. Foot control comes with a yellow plastic cover as well. We're going to go ahead and remove that. So we're going to attach this. There's a groove on the actual plug itself right here and a notch on the receptacle right here. It's very important that we line those up. We're going to undo this twist tie right here. Give us a little more leverage, a little more play to work with. And we're going to line that up, make sure it is fully seated. And then we will start screwing it on. There's a lot of threads on here, so it's going to take you a little while to get this fully seated in. All right, now that we've attached our foot control, it's time to attach our torch. So now that I've located the torch and the ground cable, we're going to go ahead and open these up and attach them. Now included in your torch should be a parts kit box and the torch itself. So we're going to save the assembly of the torch for another video, but we can show you how to properly hook this up. So with our torch, we want to make sure it is located in the electrode negative terminal and the ground clamp is in the positive terminal. So we're going to go ahead, insert this dense connector, give it a firm push and twist, make sure it securely locks. Let's set this torch down real quick. We're going to grab our water in, water out, and gas cable. Now it's easy to identify the water out cable because it is attached to the DINS connector on our torch. So we'll locate that here. Bound up right here. We're going to insert the water out cable with the red tab into the red port. Pops in real nice and easy. The next step will be to insert the water in line into the blue outlet. And last but not least, we don't want to forget the gas line right here. That's going to go on top, right above the foot pedal connection. Next step will be to attach the ground clamp itself. We'll go ahead and open that up for the pink bubble wrap package. We'll take the twist tie off and insert the DINS connector into the positive terminal. The TIG torch that comes with the DTX 2200 is a Welltech torch and that is a standardized torch across the board. Uh, for more information on the torch itself, please visit techtorch.com. This concludes the assembly video for the DTX 2200. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about OTC Diehan or the DTX 2200 itself, please visit our website at www.diehan-usa.com. <laughs>